This is Life Transformation Radio. Prepare to engage. Seatbelt activated. 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 Download initiated. Your quantum journey of transformation begins in 3, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 1. Welcome to Life Transformation Radio. I'm Rob Actis, best-selling author of The Law of Action, voice actor, business mindset coach, the podcast whisperer, and Mr. Action himself. Life Transformation Radio is heard in over 90 countries. Thank you for joining us from all around the world. Whether it's your first time joining us or you've been listening to Life Transformation Radio for some time, I want to personally thank you. Here at Life Transformation Radio, we are committed to share more about Real life, love, the power of positivity, romance, and of course, laughter. We care about helping others find their internal drive and purpose. We celebrate life's challenges and overcoming them. On the show, my guests are amazing people who are forces for good in the world around them and live a life of transformation. My guest today does just that. Today, my longtime friend, Chris Cock, and I discuss how taking massive action will always result in the best outcomes. And we're going to talk about his transformation in his very short, short life. So if you want to learn how to take massive action, be inspired, and understand when you put your mind to it, there is nothing in this world you can't do. This is the show for you. Chris is a former USC walk-on receiver who personifies the quality of tenacity. He defied the odds to become a member of the legendary USC football program, and this story will help anyone who wants to achieve a goal. And he has had lots of life transformations. Chris, welcome to Life Transformation Radio. Thank you for having me, Rob. Really appreciate it. Absolutely. So we are here. Uh, I must really like this guy because I have brought life transformation to Chris. He is based in California, is in here, and I had to have him on the show. So we are at the Scottsdale Resort at McCormick Ranch and a beautiful place, beautiful place, and really happy to be here. And I'm glad that things worked out and I can yes. bring the studio to you. I truly appreciate it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, okay. It's a big deal. If you're not a sports guy like me, it's a big deal to walk on USC. Yeah. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. All right. So let's just talk about not that, but let's go back because there's a little bit more of a story because you were playing baseball in high school. Yeah. Baseball. Until sophomore. Junior. Junior. Junior year, even later. And you're like, (laughs) hey, you know what? Baseball does not seem like the lane that I want to be on. So let me just be a football player and, and how does that so work? that's just so crazy you were that was more complimentary okay. <laughs> it was more it was more them telling me chris you're not playing this year oh you said they, okay. they, they in a sense i mean <laughs> I, I still think i could have been on that i should have been on that i wasn't the, i wasn't the worst guy on that team i was better than the worst guy on that team for sure yeah but look at that but, no that's so here's the thing, cool though, thing yeah. is that you know when one door closes another door opens absolutely and Everything just works its way out. Imagine what your life would be like if you stayed on the baseball Rob, team. Rob, I don't want to think about that. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I don't want to think about that because exactly. no, it's like, <clears throat> I look back on that version of Chris and, you know, and before this diaspora of transformation that happened. Right. And holy shit. That kid needed to have some lessons taught to him. I'll say that for sure. Well, it's, it's amazing. So you're 23. So you haven't had a whole lot of life experience, but you've had a lot of life experience. It's, it's, it's one of those deals where like you look at your life and you think about it. Like you can make so much progress in such a little amount of time. And you're not going to fucking flip a switch and you're going to be someone different in two weeks. No. Right. But you're going to, if you set an intention, like I want to be here and you personify the action. Absolutely. You know, minor actions that turn into bigger ones next thing you know you're compounding so you know it's just it's it's just a mindset and also that i mean the scary part is that can also work for negative okay so let's let's just talk specifically about that one point were you really like your life was playing baseball i know your dad bruce and 
I know you were in high school and you're playing baseball. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, what happened? All of a sudden, what did the conversation entail when they said, yeah, Chris, you suck. You're no longer playing baseball. You know, what, what it, happened? It was up until that point, excuse me, um, up until that point, that my life had been pretty much on autopilot. You know, I was just really worried about school and baseball. Like, yeah, your whole life was baseball. All, all, like, you know, just, it was almost just like. Talking to your dad. Yeah, <laughs> Chris and baseball, Chris and baseball. No, yeah, it was. It was, like, it was no. Yeah. And that's the thing, too. Like, it, it, it became like almost as if my world was upended at that point. And granted, I look back on it and having gone through like the adversity and shit that I'd gone through after that. Yeah, no, 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 stop. No, but, no I want, but I want to know. When they told you, what did they tell you? Like, how did this happen? They emailed a roster and I wasn't on it. Oh. <laughs> no, it was. <laughs> That's brutal. They emailed so the they roster. Didn't, so, so they didn't even say anything. They're just like, okay, so you're like trying to, you know, wait, my name's not on here. Yeah. Oh, it was wow. F- oh, brutal. That's terrible. That's terrible. No, it was, it was the one of the worst days of my life at that point. And you were how old? I was 16 or 17. Okay, did you have aspirations of being pro baseball? I, of course. I, I think, mean, I just, I mean, no, I did. Yeah, I mean, exactly. look, I'd have to work like crazy to get there, but like my goal was definitely get to the pros for absolutely, sure, you know? Absolutely. But like, I, I look back, definitely probably wouldn't have happened, but look, I look, I look on it now. I'm like, right. my goal was, had that path gone, obviously, you know, you're a kid, you want to go to the show, but- What was that like? When you saw that email, what was, what was that like? I was devastated, completely devastated. It was really, really sad because baseball, like you said, was my life. <laughs> yeah, big time. <laughs> no, it was terrible. It was really rough. Like big time. So take me through that. So you got this email. There's no Chris's name on there. Yeah. Did you think that it was a mistake? Did you think that they just, okay, someone messed up in the office? I I knew better. You did know? I knew better. I knew that like, I could be like, try and play dumb like that. Yo, it's just a mistake and try and help me sleep better, but there's just no, you knew, you knew. Here's the thing. Like I had a, I could think about it and be like, Hey, yeah, you know, I I did what I did, blah, 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 blah. But at the end of the day, extreme ownership, I didn't, put myself so in you situation. owned it so you oh, weren't shot so you weren't sh- were you so were you not living up to your potential and I, you knew that and you're no. kind of like skating by and like they don't it wasn't like skate like like i just thought, like you think about like the amount of work you got to put in to accomplish something and that's not a lesson until i learned later but yeah that i look back on i'm like yeah no shit i didn't make the team right but, you know but at the same time it's like i was definitely think i deserved to be on that team at that point but i look back on i'm like there's no, you, duh. Like, what do you? So you duh? knew. So you want. So you deserve to be on the team, but that's because you just thought you deserved. But deep down inside, did you know that, like, you know what? I did not do everything that I needed to do, and I probably deserved to not be on the team. At that point, no. And I, I still, I look back on that and still say no. But the reason why I say no isn't for just some myopic reason. Like, right. I, I look back on it and think, like, okay, the level of player that I was at that point still warranted that right anything beyond I, I think about it as like ensuring my success at that point you know right. like looking having 2020 backwards vision thinking to myself like okay if I had put in the level of work that I know what it takes to accomplish something I would have ensured it and I would have probably would have started right but in the sense of like my level of talent comparatively to the rest of the kids no so it wasn't so it wasn't based on your talent or your skill set it wasn't, was it based more on your talent or skill set or was it based on you not doing the work that needed to be done? You know, it was probably more so the work. Okay. Because I don't want to like just completely shit on myself, like in terms of not putting in the work because the goal I accomplished required a litany of different like tasks of that, right. you know? Right. But it's hard to be an athlete. I mean, I'm not an athlete and it's hard to be a, an athlete either in, in, in high school or, or, mm-hmm. or college and no, growing yeah, up. So, and especially if you have aspirations to be in pro, a lot yeah. of people play sports mm-hmm. in high school and they're just like, it's just something sure. fun for them. They know sure. they're never going to get to the pros. No, that's the thing too. Like, I think one of the best, like the, one of the best lessons that I learned was from that. Cause I've learned a lot of lessons in my short life, like we mentioned, Yeah, but really crossing your T's, dotting your I's. You know, I learned that in a few different ways and make to the term of like, 
wanting to make sure that you make the team and putting all the effort in, giving them an opportunity, not an opportunity, not giving them an opportunity to say no. Right. That's the way you go above and beyond. And that's the law of action, 10x action that I employed. And look what happened. I played wide receiver at USC. Okay. So <laughs> let's, let's just a little bit at a time. So we're in high school and you got, sure. I guess in essence, cut from the team. I did. No. Okay. And that was devastating. Devastating. And so how long did it take for you to all of a sudden, hey, I'm going to go play football. Did you play football before? I had always loved catching passes. Never played. Oh, I mean, I played like flag football in middle school. That's a big, that's a big <laughs> leap. You know, no, 16 and a half years. How long, what was the, tra- the time frame from being from baseball to being in football? I got cut on February 24th, 2015. And Probably within two and a half weeks, I was in the gym. Train like that next wow. day, I was in the gym, and then about- okay. So stop that. So the next day, you were in the gym. Oh, yeah. like you already had just like pivoted. Yeah, that's that says a lot about who you are as a person. Adversity introduces a man to himself, right? But for a sixteen-year-old to have, be devastated because you had to have been devastated, sure. absolutely. And then from within twenty-four hours, you were in the gym. Like I'm going to go play football. It was. It was. It was. What started out as actually was like, I thought to myself, okay, I'm going to train so hard because I, at that point I wasn't really lifting like prior to me right. making or me getting cut from the baseball right. team. So I wasn't, that's what I mean when I wasn't like putting in that work. I was putting in work like to a certain degree, like on the field, taking swings right. and all that right. shit. But in the gym, that was practically non-existent at that point. So I thought to myself, I'm just going to make sure that these, these guys don't say no to me next year. I'm going to make myself so damn good that there's just no way they can say no. Oh, so you started working out to get back into the baseball. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So then about, I'd say a good, so so the way that it kind of inevitably would work out is about two weeks later, the football team started doing spring football workouts, which means like right. they're just out on the field, yeah, yeah. after school conditioning, yeah. whatever, you know? So I see them coming in to the through the weight room and after their practice and you know they're all like charged up and whatever and you know this like thinking to myself wait these kids aren't any better than me if i put my mind to it i know i can be as good as them get better you know so i see all that and i'm thinking to myself like maybe i'll give this thing a try you know maybe i'll try this football stuff i always had great hands right and it's crazy because thinking back on that like that's you know how crazy that is like (laughs) no it's, it's it's great it's it's awesome though but like it's, 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 it, I don't know if it's just like I combined that with like the newfound testosterone that I was doing after having not worked out as much as at that point, but in thinking like, I'm going to be a football player. Yeah. So I, I think it might just be like synonymous with athletics and football being like a sport that you have to put on a lot of size for. Big difference. Yeah. Baseball no, completely. to football. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. So I, 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 pra- I credit a little bit with that for sure for like, being like, oh damn, I'm getting big. Like maybe I can play ball. So it, 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 it combined with a couple different things. And then I was like, all right, all right, I'm going to take a shot. So I emailed the football coach in my Spanish class one day. Right. And I hit him up. I tell him, hey coach, my name's Chris. I play baseball. I really, really think that I can play football. Excuse me. Sorry. I was, had a Red Bull. <laughs> You're fine. But yeah. Anyway. Um, so yeah, I tell him like I really think I want to play football. I can play receiver. I can play safety. I can do whatever. And then he emails me back that same day and goes, "All right, come meet with me after school." And I go, "Okay." So I met with him after school, and after that, he told me summer workouts start this day. You can come out and work out yeah. with the team and da 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 da. That's cool. And then from there, it was just you know not it was just kind of just going. And like, that was your junior year. That was my junior year. Yeah, that's amazing. That's a big and I love it. So from there. You the first game you had you tore your Achilles ACL ACL yeah ACL and partial meniscus that first game the first now did you have aspirations of like going on to anywhere right now you're just playing football I thought that at that point I'm be honest with you I was thinking to myself okay maybe I could leverage this into like a really if I could if I did get a look like maybe I'd get a good school to look at me you know okay what is it? okay so I love it so. You're playing baseball uh-huh. for high school. Yeah. You get cut. Uh-huh. Then you just go flip the script. Now I'm playing football mm-hmm. for my high school team. And I'm thinking, you know what? I'm gonna go to college and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna get 
I'm going to play yeah. college football. Sure. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's an unreal, that's not a normal no, way for people to think. No, I know. If it was I, a normal I thing, so I wouldn't be on the show with you. That's <laughs> great. I mean, like, okay. So then you tore your ACL. Yeah. First game. And then after that, how many shows? And then you tore your meniscus right after that. In that same game. Yeah, it was like ACL. So I tore my ACL. <laughs> and for all those who don't know what it feels like to tear an ACL, imagine like you're playing, like playing a guitar. Right. And the guitar string pops. <laughs> and imagine that like inside your knee. <laughs> and for okay. all those non-music buffs, imagine like you, you're playing tennis and your tennis racket, like the string pops. It doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good at all. No. But it feels like weird though. It so I've really done weird. that. So I've uh-huh. done that. So I was playing... And I'm not a sports guy, but, and it's kind of funny story. I'll just to digress. My mom got really pissed about this is that I was moving when I was 18 years old, I was moving from San Diego to Colorado. Ooh. And I was living with my mom at the time and she was, you got to pack. You got to pack. The movers come on Monday. Mm-hmm. Well, Saturday I hadn't packed and I'm like, I'll pack on Sunday. I don't have a lot of stuff and the movers will come and I'll be driving out. It'll be easy. Well, I decided to go play football on Saturday afternoon. Oh, no. <laughs> and I showed up back home and my friends were carrying me. My leg was swollen. Yeah. <laughs> I was doing some kind of play and I went left and my knee went mm-hmm. right and it just exploded. Like, yeah. So when I happened. came home. She was so mad at me. I ended up with a straight leg cast. My sister and my mom had to pack all my, all my wow. stuff up. And the movers came in the morning and they just threw everything in boxes. They just, yeah. they didn't care. So like, I, there was nothing marked, but mm-hmm. yeah, it's very painful. Very, no, it's, it's very uncomfortable. That was a transformational moment for me was just like, I, I'm, that's why putting stuff off. So back to you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you, you tore your, your meniscus and your ACL yeah. and you still have aspirations of going to USA. Yeah. I know. Well, yes, because I was Shit, whether you want to call it delusional, crazy, whatever, 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 you, you know, I mean, whatever they called Steve Jobs and Elon Musk and all those crazy, everyone who doesn't how about, do it. How about visionary and Vision, determined? No, yeah, it's exactly. And I don't think, I don't think delusional is the right word. No, I think I, it's great. I, 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 you, I, I, under, I know what you're saying. Okay. I, I agree. I'm not going to let you say words because language is so important. I'm not going to say is. you words that are going to knock you down. I find it, uh, the reason why I say delusional is because it was, it's such a negative connotation that goes with it. Absolutely. But the thing is like, that's how you describe some of the most amazing people and visionaries in the world. You know, I wouldn't say delusional. I'll say visionary. Let's, and yeah. I will say it's meant to come know, across like that for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cause no, I don't think yeah. you're delusional. Delusional would be more of a negative thing. And I'm no, not no. going to let you say that. So no, I appreciate that. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm going to take a stand for that. That's very for important. Sure, for sure. So, all right. So you had this vision yeah. of being USC. At USC. Yeah. And, and so what was happening? So everybody was getting a nod and you weren't getting the nod. Yeah. Well, but you're like, everybody, everybody at the kids I went to at high school where it was kind of one of those deals where not a lot of kids were getting those looks. Right. And it was the deal where, well, it's USC. It's they a big were, deal. It's they a were big jealous deal. that right. I wanted to even have that goal. Right. And the, I, I'm not trying to come at people's heads right now, but like it was, it was one of those deals where it was like, they're so, insecure about it absolutely that they would rather have me not do it absolutely and feel justified in their own what did you publicly thing. declare that you're going to be a walk-on at usc no but the once you like make an like everyone kind of knows everybody everybody's shit in high school right so like right. whether you talk about it like a little bit you know it's like maybe so I'll, you publicly declared i didn't you, really you, though like but I, if you say one thing to one person might as well yeah. it's publicly declared might as well, especially yeah. You know, with social media and with with texting, I was I was more ballsy towards the like first year of college, but like obviously back to, like the right. forward looking more. But right, like in high school, I was my mind wasn't really made up yet. Like, okay, it was just more of like an idea. Like, okay. I, I might do this. Like, I want to go to USC. You know, football is right there. Like, I was thinking to myself, like, okay, I could do it. If I want to put my mind to it, I definitely could do it. Right, but that's not something that the people in my high school were like all about. Right. So it was Well, you know, people are gonna be if if they look at themselves in the mirror and they don't see that opportunity for them and then they see you and you're so bold and you're so confident, mm-hmm. you're taking action, you're really working hard to that, and yeah. you know it's an uphill battle, their insecurities are you know, it's the it's the crab thing. They don't want you to get out sure. of that of that that bowl. For sure. And it's funny too, Rob, because prior to even me taking that massive action 
that's really when the hate started to flood, like come yeah. in. Oh, and yeah. I wasn't even really beginning my like journey yet. Like I wasn't even sure I was going to do it. But if they see potential, they see potential, exactly. and they want to stomp it out. That's the thing, exactly. that's because the thing. they don't see it in themselves, no. and it's unfortunate. And that, and also, they're young. You were seventeen years old. Yeah, seventeen, eighteen. Yeah, yeah. So you know, that's a maturity level. Yeah, and you had more maturity in ways, mm-hmm. which is great. And you also had great parental guidance. Yeah, so sure. you know yeah. that that helps too. Mm-hmm. Um, so how was that? Was there bullying going on? Did you, you know, what transformation? There was something. So you had a transformational moment. Was that right in high school when things went a little bit dark? There are a few. So okay. the first transformation moment, transformational moment that I'll speak of was, shit, there was a few of them in high school, but the one that always sticks with me was the one that where I felt so like attacked, group, group attack when I was right. walked into this, the locker room at my school. And this one kid thought it was cool to try and call me out. And I look back on it, it's like, you're calling me out for wanting to do something big. Like right, wanting to go play right. at USC, like you guys are supposed to be my teammates, like right. or were my teammates, and whom they always pride themselves on brotherhood, you know, the whole aspect of football and like family absolutely, and teams absolutely. and stuff like that. Yeah. And it can be kind of a farce, in my opinion. But the point that I'm trying to make is that one kid decided to like, Chris, are you really going to walk on at USC? And it was very pejorative the way, like his tonality was very pejorative. But at that point, everyone else thought it was okay to try and kicked me while I was down too. Right. Because it's just group dynamics. Right. People want to think like, okay, once it's okay, you know, everyone else starts, everyone else starts doing it. Like one person takes a drink, next thing you know, that guy thinks take a drink, you know, and the next thing you know, everyone's drinking. Absolutely. So, you know, it this this one kid started laughing at me and everyone started trying to get their shots in and like there's just no way you walk on at USC. They invite people to walk on there. Chris, you've got no shot. Like all these kind of things and I just like look back on it and it's like, holy shit. Like I think about that, even when I was walking like up to practice at USC, like way past like any of these kids. Right. Like, I would think to myself, like, holy shit, I got really, really far past these kids, but I'm still thinking all that hate that I took, all that shit. It like, has an impact. Of course it, it does. That changed massive, me. Absolutely. Those that like when I'm, when I'm talking about transformational shit, like the person who was taking that shit in high school to the person I am now, whew, list of transformational moments that got me there. Absolutely. So you you were mentioning before we started recording that that you had a transformational moment that has really changed, and that was your your um, alcohol consumption was alcohol. So yeah, I mean, I was by no means like an alcoholic, but I did love to party. I okay. loved to freaking party. Like I was going clubbing and going to house parties. Like obviously, I mean, it's a high school senior, like, absolutely. You know, but you. like yeah, yeah. I was started clubbing when I was like seventeen. Okay, so we started going to like clubs with like some of the other kids, and it was more for like the essence of like popularity because my brother and I were like really kind of trying to build that kind of name in high school, like as fleeting as it is, you know, like going to all the parties, going to all this and alcohol definitely was a part of that for sure. So like people think you're cool in high school when you start drinking and partying and doing all that shit, Yeah, you know, but it was really becoming like, okay, how many parties can we go to? How many clubs can we get into? How much like, how many Snapchat stories can we post? Like from the clubs, you know, like, and everyone at high school in high school was like, damn, we lived vicariously through your Snapchats on Saturday night. And that wow. was like at clubs. Yeah. And I was like, is that a win? Like I look back on now, I'm like, is that a like why is that a win in high yeah. school? I, I will say that, man, I'm glad social media wasn't around when I was a kid. Yeah, I'm just so it's 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 so overwhelming. It I could can only toxic. imagine oh. It can be so toxic, especially like I don't want to like get too like on the nose, but certain things of social media, like it can, it definitely has its place. So social media definitely has its place, like to grow, to get something out there. But so many people are just so like, Oh, who commented on this? Who commented on that? And if it starts governing your relationships, like, Oh, this person didn't like my post. This person didn't comment on it. This person did this, sent this story or whatever it was. If it starts governing your relationships, Holy Christ, going to be toxic. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Absolutely. So you graduated high school. Yeah. So did your party conti- party and continue into, oh, yeah. into college? So it really. Okay. So I went to junior college right after high school because I'd gotten okay. denied by USC my first time at that point. And um, right after that, I went. I I kind of had like almost in my mind a free pass, so to speak, because I was just had knee surgery about right right after my right before my freshman year of high school college. Uh, 
Santa Monica. So, and that was the fix? So so you injured yourself in high school and then finally in, in college you had surgery? About a year after I injured. Okay. It. Yeah. Okay. So I went, I would say that, you know, I mean, I'd come back down on the weekends because I'd go to clubs back in San Diego and right. that kind of thing. So I was just kind of like kicking it. Like I really didn't, yeah. I didn't really kick my action in until a little bit after, until I got like super like, all right, I need to fucking stop doing all this. Right. So it was like, I'd go to clubs in San Diego and do that kind of stuff with a lot of my friends who are in San Diego, so, who, who were still in San Diego at that point. So it was like, you know, you're just out there and doing the same shit and trying to do the same thing. And, oh, what am I doing here? You know, I'm trying to go to a club a tonight. peer pressure. Yeah, too. no, for sure. Absolutely. For sure. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's kind of like a crazy part about it. Like, you look back on it now and then really you can't let anybody make a decision for you. Like peer pressure, you know I mean? It's, it's an interesting topic because if you think about peer pressure, it's like literally letting external forces make a yeah. decision for you that you being the one, like the internal. And you, and you have to live the life yeah, that it's, they it's, want you no, to do. It, it's so, it's so yeah. scary. It's so scary because people do let that happen. Absolutely. And I was, I, I, peer pressure definitely did have a certain aspect, but it was more like living like a particular quote unquote brand that I had built for myself at that point. Like, okay, Chris is going to clubs and stuff like that, you know? So it was, it was, it was that point where it was almost like living up to it, especially right. when I was in high school, right. especially when I was in high school. So you got out of high school, you survived that, you got into junior college, mm -hmm. you're still partying. So when you got to USC, did it? Did you transition, or were you still partying? In, in oh, USC? I was well straight edge by that point. Okay, so backing up a little bit, I was partying for like all of my freshman year. And then, but freshman year not at USC, no, in junior college. Yeah. So I okay. went to two years of junior college. Got it. So my first year was at Santa Monica, and I was like coming back down to San Diego almost every weekend, and. As like I was kind of going to the same club, all the same stuff, like you know. But second, end of my second, first semester of my second year, I went out to Colorado to visit my mom okay. because she was out there with her clients, and that's when I look at my life. I'm like, okay, that was the turning point. That was when I turned my life around. Wow. So I, I like, I'm serious, and like, it was just the weather. It was so beautiful, and like, I got serious about football at that point. Like, I really did. I stopped drinking like pretty quickly after that. And I got so serious. Like I was drawing out agility ladders in the snow on the football field wow. at CU Boulder because that's where we were in Boulder. So I look back on them like, damn, that was the point where my life turned around. Like there were some times I'd still drink like in between the right. times where I really made the decision to stop and the point that I like my life began to turn around, but it was a gradual step in the right direction. And it was one of those things where I like, holy cow, damn. I really need to, it was, it was a real perspective moment though. It was perspective. I was, I, I looked at myself in the mirror, obviously that's metaphorically speaking, but right. I'm like, do you really think that this kind of behavior is going to get you to USC football? Yeah. And I was thinking to myself, no, it's not. It's really not. Do you realize how far behind the eight ball you are, Chris? Do you realize how fucking good these kids are? And I was like, I've got a lot of ground to make up and not a lot of time to do it. So I removed anything from my life that would inhibit me from getting there. That's really And that happened to be one of them. And at that point, like I had seen some sort of like, like my cousin OD'd from other stuff. And wow. Yeah. And I mean, a lot of like, God That's rest. Rough, like, I've seen That's some, rough. I've seen like, I'm, I'm so blessed that I'm like, not don't do anything. Like, cause I've yeah. seen like two really, like one of my really good friends, brother passed from it. And then oh, one, man. And so I'm sorry. Recently, a friend of ours from uh, from LA, he passed too from OD. Wow. So it's like, it's a lot of like, now you obviously see like certain things like right. at an arm's length, you know, whether they be friends, family, blah, blah, blah. Being, well, transformations in your life don't necessarily be transformations in necessarily to you. Yeah. They can be around you. For sure. In, no, in your orbit. Be. And you can really learn from that. You know, one of the things that I talk about is that you... And, and some people don't like when I say this because I'm calling it the carpet, but it's a good thing for them to know is that you are responsible for your life. Yes. Everything that's in your life, where you are today, you're responsible for it. Mm -hmm. Now you're not to blame how you're responsible You are responsible. For. Every decision you made is where you are in your life right now. Completely. If you don't like your life the way it is, guess what? 
change it. You did it. Yeah. And if you did it, then you can pivot and change your life and be different today and take ownership and be responsible and have that extraordinary life. That's spot on. That's exactly. And that's what you on. did. So I really want to acknowledge you for that. Thank that's you. That's huge, especially as, a, as just a young man. Thank you. Like that's, that's really incredible. So yeah. let's dive into USC. So you, you got, you pivoted. You're like, yeah. I need to change my ways. Mm-hmm. You had that pivotal moment in this, in looking into the, into the, into the ether of, of beautiful Boulder, Colorado mm-hmm. and, the, and the beautiful Rocky Mountains. It's gorgeous yeah. there. Yeah. Um, gorgeous. It's a very spiritual place. I've mm-hmm. been there. It's pretty remarkable. It's amazing. Just looking at the Rockies can transform your life. Oh, the flat like, irons covered in snow. I was like, yeah. holy cow. I lived in Aurora and I would just look at the Rockies and I'm like, wow no it's amazing you can you you look it's it's amazing like here in arizona we have mountains but the rocky mountains to look out of your apartment oh, and yeah. see the rocky mountains is just it's it's pretty breathtaking oh, so absolutely. you decided that you are gonna walk on at usc yeah tell me about that so the real first time that i decided like okay i'm really gonna do this right seconds after i got off the operating table my ACL, but like the seriousness of it didn't happen until Boulder, like we just said. But the thing about that is, is like, it requires a lot. It requires a lot like a lot. of you. Yeah. Right? And that's the thing that I don't know if a lot of people recognize. Like everyone has a goal. Do people reach them? Some, some, sometimes they do. It just depends on the size of the goal. Right. Set your goals for as big as you freaking can. Absolutely. You know, like, I, I've watched this one guy, his name's Dan Pena. He's super controversial, super controversial, but he is like unrepentantly like open. Yeah, he like, screams at you. He screams I love at it. you. Yeah, and he's, 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 he's a nut. He's a nut. <laughs> he's great. But, like, I love, I love him. I, I, I think, so I think he's, I think he's got his place for sure. Like I, I, lo- I don't like listen to him and like think, okay, like that's how you need to treat people at all. But, but the way that I think about it is like, you well, can do what, like, stop, only person stopping you is you. Get yeah, your shit together. I think it's great. I think it's great because I think that children have been coddled in today's society. Completely. They have been protected with bubble wrap in ways that, that I'm glad that I wasn't. Mm-hmm. And I think he's taking a lot of young people, mm-hmm. mostly men, yeah. and making them men mm-hmm. and slapping them in the face. If not, he's punching them in the face <laughs> or he's hitting them over the head with a brick. Yeah. <laughs> like that's Dan Pena. He says, I mean, no, he says no, that, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I mean, he's, uh-huh. you know, and a lot of people don't like his, th- but I think it's, I think it's a slap in the face that a lot uh-huh. of men need. I agree. Because they're living in la-la land. Completely. No, it's, it's and very they, true. And they have a think, sense of entitlement. And that's the one thing that in this conversation with you that you haven't had a sense of entitlement. Nope. And and that's pretty, pretty admirable. Thank, oh, I appreciate that. And let me put it this way too. In a sense of entitlement, this world doesn't owe you jack shit. No, nothing. not a damn thing. Nothing. And that's and the thing that's, people don't recognize. That's pretty profound of you to say because most people that are 20 to 23, they do think the world owes them something. Yeah. And it doesn't. Uh uh-uh. uh. Doesn't. It, not it, even a know, little bit. You know, and, and to talk about, you know, kids that are living with their parents right now, well, you owe me. Uh, no. You're, you, it's a gift no. that they are allowing you to stay. And some kids are living to be 30 years old. No, yeah. It, it just, it's one of those things because I've heard a lot of like talk about this, you know? And if part of me thinks that like the aspect of like just mooching off your parents is dog shit. It's dog shit. Let's just call yeah. a spade a spade. There is a certain perspective that I don't like not I'm an employee for myself, but for certain people, right. don't move out until you have a hundred K in the bank. That's an interesting one. Have you heard about that yet? No. There's a thing where you like <laughs> you don't move out and like if you're about your shit and you really don't move out until you have like a certain amount where you can like go buy a put a lease or put a loan on an apartment building or something like that. Okay, so I have a friend. <laughs> we were just having lunch today and their 20 year old is still living with them. Okay. Uh-huh. And they were having a conversation and they're like, what's your life plan? I got it. I am not going to work. I am going to go out and do what I want with my friends. And I am going to live an extraordinary life. And they're like, how are you going to do that? What does that mean? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to live here and you guys are going to support me. Ooh. 
boom, like, boom but goes he the actually, dynamite. But he actually thought that. That's audacious. It is. And so I love, you know, one of the things I, Gary, Gary V talks about this, and I think it's hilarious, where someone comes up and they're like, my parents are so controlling. They tell me what to do and this, that, and this. And they go, are they giving you money? Well, yeah. yeah. Well, then if you want to not be told what to do, then don't accept their money. I've heard that and one. And grow the hell up. And be on your own. Yeah. And pull yourself up with the bootstraps and you own your life yourself. Absolutely. So no, it's, it's so true. I think it's a lot of, you know, I, I, I've kind of formed a take on this. You want to hear it? Yeah. People don't want to hear what, you know, people don't want to hear what they should hear. What they should hear. Absolutely. And I think that a lot of people are so, don't learn. And there's so much like, shit, I don't want to say this, but so much stupidity in this world this day that, since people are so bubble wrapped, hate mail. They're gonna, they're gonna like you, <laughs> right? Like, there's so much, like, let's just be honest. Like, there's a lot. Like, a lot of people don't really like don't use logic in a lot of senses, right? You know, and so it's like once people stopped learning, is because no one was ever told they were wrong, right? No one was ever told that they were wrong or they'd made a mistake. So once right. that start, once that like ideology Those stopped, participation happening, trophies, yeah. So like oh once that kind of stuff stopped, <laughs> right? Learning stopped. And look yeah. where that look where that led. Absolutely, you know, a bunch of entitled people like who are my age. Yeah, and I like I, I definitely don't con- include myself in that conversation. I've been through the freaking gutter a bunch of times. Right. So it's right. like he, seeing that kind of stuff and seeing how people react to that is like really really interesting. It's, like people my age are just so different. Oh yeah, and the kids in college like. You know what? Do you know what my dad does, bro? Like, do you, like, do you realize how like I could sue you? Like, my dad's a lawyer, especially at USC. Yeah. Oh, I could imagine. And thank goodness I wasn't part of that world because I, I didn't really, I didn't. When I was at SC, like, I had decided to stop drinking, stop partying, and like, I didn't really even go to any college parties. Like, right. Thank goodness I freaking didn't. I mean, people like certain people, are like, oh yeah, I missed out. But I'm sitting there thinking to myself, like, damn, I've made progress. I made progress. Why would I want to go backwards? Yeah. So that was just my take on it. Yeah. <laughs> so I wanted just, just. Talk about you, you did the walk on on USC and that was pretty transformational. Amen. And, and I, I think it's amazing the grit and everything that you did. And it's a big accomplishment. Thank you. It, very few people do it. Mm-hmm. How many people try to do it and don't make it? A lot. There are too many to count. Right. Because like I was just saying to you earlier, anybody in the country, if they were offered a roster spot or a scholarship offer to USC. Right they're going to at least entertain it because USC is generally in everyone else's top five when they're recruited. Yeah, like, absolutely. Unless you're going to Alabama or something about SC's like top four college football programs in history, USC, Alabama, Ohio State, and Oklahoma. Those are the top four. Yeah. And no particular order, obviously. Bama's like a juggernaut still. USC's like one of the historical best. Right. So suffice it to say, anybody in the country, if they're getting a USC offer, they're looking at that shit. Right. So it's one of those things where like I couldn't even fathom the amount of people because any JUCO player in the country, any high school player in the country, they're going to think about that. Like anybody would love to take my spot. Right. Everybody would. And that's kind of the mindset that I brought to it. You know, like and I was at SC, I think to myself like, damn, you know how many people, you know, think about this. Chris Two years ago, trying to get here would take your shit if in a second. Right. If you decide to start slacking. Right. No question. Right. And I would do it with a smile on my face. You know, so it's one of those deals where you got to think about those kind of things. Right. It's perspective, but you're also like, damn, I made it, but make a bad decision. You're off that freaking squad. Right. And I, I think I, I asked you before, if like, you know, everything that's happened in your life, you know, if you had a magic wand, you could go back and change all of the negative and the, the, the trials and tribulations of Chris, mm-hmm. would you go back and change anything? <laughs> no, no freaking shot. Yeah. I, I, I look back on who I was back in the days, like, and I was just kind of, I don't want to say ditzy, but like I was just so unintentional, like right. just kind of like more focused on like, okay, which group of people am I going to try and wrangle together to go to a party on Friday night? Like that kind of stuff. And I look back and I'm like, damn, I detest who I was. Like I really do. So all that growth came after that. And all that growth and perspective changed me. And having gone through the adversity and the things that I did and dealt with, I I wouldn't change that for I wouldn't trade that for anything. 
because it got me to where I am today. And I know I can take on, like, do anything in this world when you put your mind to it. Like, truly, truly, truly. Absolutely. I got to say, Chris, thank you so much for thank being you. here today. Thank you so much to the Scottsdale Resort at McCormick Ranch for creating this great environment and space for us and allowing us to be here today. And I got to say, you definitely live a life of transformation. Now, I know you can't talk about it, so it's going to be cool because you have to come back. Oh, yeah. But let me tell you, Chris is going to be the Forbes 30 under 30, and he is on track. And one of the things is, is that he has not let his downside of, of obstacles in his life stop him in any way, shape, or form. And he definitely is someone who lives a life of transformation. Amen. I'm so excited in the next year to have you back and share Absolutely. what you've got cooking because oh, yeah. it is huge. Hey, if you want to follow along to Chris, you can find him on TikTok or <laughs> the gram at the Chris Cock. And I, I got to tell you, it's C-A-U-L-K. It'll be in the show notes. Thanks for being here. Really appreciate thank it. Thank you, Robbie. I truly, truly appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. And Mr. Austin over there with behind the camera, thank you for being here today too. And thank you so much for your support Amen. and taking the time out of your busy and precious day to listen to us. We so appreciate it. Thank you for allowing me along my very special guest, longtime friend, Chris Cock, to touch your heart, move your soul, and inspire you to live a life of transformation. I'm Rob Actis. Until next time. This is Life Transformation Radio. Download complete.